two lessons we're going to wrap up the whole subject of circles of fifths and circles of fourths as they relate to key signatures and key relationships. Now if you've already followed through the previous two lessons, the one on the circle of fifths and the one on the circle of fourths, you could be forgiven for thinking that you've already done enough work on this. However, I want to tell you about two really good reasons for following through these last two lessons on the subject if you really want to get a solid grasp of this whole area. Firstly, we're going to discuss a couple of points that are very rarely covered in online guitar lessons and that I think you're going to find genuinely interesting. Secondly, we're going to put you in a position of so thoroughly understanding this subject that you won't be thrown when we come to have to use it later on on the more complex levels of guitar music theory. In particular, when we come to the lessons on harmonising the major scale, I think most people are going to struggle if they haven't got a really good grasp of the subject matter of these two lessons we're working on now. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at the circle of fifths in a different form from what we've looked at so far, a circular form. Here we have a popular way of representing the sharp key signatures, starting with the key of C at the top. This is our neutral key in the sense that it has neither sharps nor flats. Then we work round clockwise, going up the C scale five notes, because this is a circle of fifths, to the key of G, which has one sharp. Then on to the fifth note in the key of G, which is D. The key of D major has two sharps. Then in D we go up five steps to A, and the key of A has three sharps. In A we go up five steps to E, with four sharps. In E we can go up five steps to B, and we've got five sharps. F sharp, the fifth note in the key of B major, is the next one in the circle with six sharps in the key signature. And finally we get to the key of C sharp major with all seven notes in the scale sharped. Notice that in blue writing we also included the relative minor keys. These are keys that share their key signatures with the major key in the same segment of the circle. These need to become familiar to you as there are many useful applications of knowledge involving relative keys. And quite often familiarity with these provides you with a great shortcut. So this is good stuff for lazy people who would rather spend less time studying and more time playing music. This subject's covered more fully elsewhere on this site, so we'll move on. Now, what I mainly want to point out to you about this diagram is what we might call the elephant in the room. For the last three lessons in this series, we've been going on about the circle of fifths. And yet, looking at this diagram, it's quite clearly not a circle. Not a complete one, anyway. At least, not yet. Well, the next thing we're going to do is put that right. So we've come this far by taking each scale, stepping up five notes on that scale, and then discovering that that gives us a new scale that needs one extra sharp. So let's see what happens if we continue that process. I think we'll move over to the whiteboard to do this. So, so far we've got round the circle of fifths to the key of C sharp major. That looks like this. Let's draw a stave. And our treble clef. And then put the sharps in Father, Charles. Goes down and enters battle. 
seven sharps. So now we'll put our notes in C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and we'll name them C. I just I always just write the letters in first. Kind of just helps you keep on track. Then apply the key signature. Father, Charles, goes down and enters battle. Now let's just number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's as far as we got in previous lessons. But we said we're now going to just continue the same process as got us thus far. So that's taking one, two, three, four, five, the fifth letter of that key, G sharp. We bring that down here, and that's going to be our next key in the series, G sharp major. So again, a quick stave. Treble clef, and I'll put this key signature in to get us going. Father, Charles, goes, down, and enters battle. Now I'll put the notes in, but starting on G, or G sharp, A, B, C. D, E, F, G, letter names, key signature, father, Charles, goes, down, and enters, Battle. So that at the moment is still this key signature from C sharp. So if you remember what we did before with this, then as a next step we analyse the intervals between each of these notes in terms of tones and semitones, and then we compare that to our major scale formula. So Gap between G sharp and A sharp is a tone. The gap between A sharp and B sharp is a tone. The gap between B sharp and C sharp, you have to think a bit carefully. B sharp is actually a note that sounds the same as C. So C to C sharp is an extra semitone on top of that. Um, so that gives us a semitone. C sharp to D sharp is a tone. D sharp to E sharp is a tone. E sharp to F sharp, another little tricky one. E sharp actually sounds the same as F natural. So again, between F natural and F sharp, there'd only be a semitone. So between E sharp and F sharp, there's only a semitone. And then F sharp to G sharp, a tone. So now we're comparing this to our major scale formula, which I'm sure you all know off by heart by now. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So we can see it goes wrong here. No great surprise uh, that it goes wrong around note 7. Because uh, that's been the pattern all the way through the circle of fifths. So we need to move that note one step further in that direction to turn that from a semitone to a tone, and we simply do that by adding another sharp. This note becomes referred to as F double sharp. So that moves that one step further away from E sharp, so that becomes now a tone. At the same time, it's squashed that gap up, because if you take F, 
and sharpen it twice, it'll sound the same as G, G natural. So the gap between G natural and G sharp, semitone. So that's fixed our, our formula back to tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So that extra sharp actually goes in up here, right next to the first F sharp. And we say the key of G sharp major has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sharps. Now, if you didn't guess that that was going to be our solution there, you could well be forgiven. Because unless you've already studied music theory to quite a high level, the chances are you will never have encountered double sharps. They almost never actually appear on written music. But a knowledge of them and an understanding of them does come in very handy when you're working in music theory land. So, what does F double sharp sound like? Well, we've already pointed this out. If you take an F up one step to F sharp, and then another step further, you're really back to G natural. So F double sharp sounds the same as G. Why can't we simply call that note G? Well, the answer is because we're in the key of G sharp. Now that means that every G note that appears on this stave has to sort of respond to the G sharp sign in the key signature here. Um, so this would raise a problem really if, if we had a one note in the key that sounds like G and one that sounds like G sharp, it could quickly get quite confusing reading the music if you had to sort of waltz them all the time. So the solution uh, that was uh, brought up really many, many years ago um, was to call the note that sounds like G in this particular key F double sharp. So any note that appears on this F space is played to sound like G. Any note that appears on this top line is played to sound like G. But we call it F double sharp. It'll make more sense as we go along. Okay, so let's move on.